This is lines 56 to 63 of Ovid's account of Orpheus and Eurydice, which is included in his Metamorphoses. And here in 56, here, literally heek, uh, Orpheus is taking Eurydice back up to the world, but it is at this point that he uh, becomes a little paranoid that she's actually there still with him, and he turns back and seals her, her death for the second time. Here, fearing that she was losing strength. So remember, metuo, first of all, metuo means fear, to fear. And the other part of this is that we have a fear clause. And the thing that Latin students have to remember is that the ut and the ne are flip-flopped. So usually ne means something like, <clears throat> so that something doesn't happen. But with fearing, we're fearing that something was happening. So we're fearing that she was deficaretting, that she was losing her strength or she was failing. And him, Orpheus, and we know that because of the us, eager, literally, of seeing. So this is the gerund. Um, and here we can translate this uh, eager to see. The lover, him, loving her, turned his eyes. So we can take a mons as either a, um, a noun, uh, modifying Orpheus, or my preference is to take that really as the present active participle, modifying Orpheus, the subject of flexit. So he, Orpheus, loving her, turned his eyes, because that's after all why he turned his eyes, right? Because he was, he was eager to, to make sure that she was there, and he loved her so much he, he couldn't help himself. Well... Immediate, and immediately she slipped back, stretching out her arms, struggling, striving, trying to grasp him and to be grasped. So also I should say here this quay links this participial clause with this participial clause. So stretching out her uh, both stretching out her arms and struggling, trying, striving to grasp and to be grasped. Nothing except the receding air, the receding breezes, did she, unlucky, grab. So unlucky, the unlucky girl, the unlucky one, grabbed at nothing except the receding airs, receding breezes. And now, again, dying, Known est questa. She did not lament or she did not complain uh, literally anything or maybe we could say in any way about her husband. For what would be complained about? What would be lamented except say Amatam that she had been loved. Um, I can think of a few things, but that's beside the point. Um, we have the grammar here, uh, queror, um, or, or I'm sorry, I said what could be complained about, but queror is a deponent verb. So what could she complain about except that, and then she here the reflexive uh, that she had been loved. And her final goodbye, she said, so supremum wale dixit. So she said her final goodbye, which now barely by his ears or in his ears, he uh, could accept or he would accept. So he, her final goodbye, which he barely received with his ears. And again, to the same place, she fell back. So re voluta here is similar to re lapsa est, um, but the action is a little bit more violent. So she slipped back here, and now she's sort of falling or tumbling backwards.